Hi guys, Dustin here with another Star Trek, the official Starships collection from Eagle Moss. And we are taking a look at the USS Equinox in CC72381. Ship is a Nova class Starship science vessel. Length of 222 meters and 8 decks. Specifications. It is a Nova class starship constructed in the Utopia Plantia shipyards. Launched in 2370. Sadly destroyed in 2376. 80 crew members. Top speed of warp 8. Type XB phasers. Photon torpedo launchers times two. Well, there's two of them. And Rudolph Ransom the third would be the captain. Let's take a look. All right, so, at 222 meters, this ship very small. It was actually well equipped for ill equipped for survival of thousands of light years from Federation space. And around this time, USS Equinox did took some heavy da heavy damage and punishment during its time in the Delta Quadrant. It actually led to the deaths of all about five crew members. And the Equ Equinox was one of the several ships that Caretaker pulled into the Delta Quadrant, originally explorer from another galaxy. Caretaker had remained in Delta Quadrant carefully on Campa after accidentally ruining the atmosphere on their planet, finding himself close to death. He sought to find a successor from anywhere but abandoned every species that seems unsuitable. The captain, Rudolph Ransom, right here, first officer Maxwell Burke, broke many of Starfleet's rules in order to survive in Delta Quadrant. His ship suffered major damage and injury. And became less and less concerned with morality and eventually towards murder shortened their journey home. Here's more, more pictures. Voyager's commander, Captain Janeway, discovered Ransom was done. She attempted to arrest him, but he and the surviving crew members took the Equinox hid near a planet with Arkham Jank atmosphere that masked the ship from sensors. That's unbelievable. And the star date, the Equinox was commissioned. Star date 47007.1. When the Equinox came, when the Voyagers came to rescue for Equinox assistance, nucleogenic life forms started to attack both ships, convinced that there was no difference between the two crews. Voyagers eventually managed to communicate with the life forms, promised to punish Ransom. And Ran Janeway pursued the Ransom in the ensuing battle. Voyager inflicted serious damage on the Equinox. After Ransom was willing to surrender, First Officer Maxwell Burke wasn't. Ransom elected to destroy a ship, killing both himself and Burke. And five surviving crew members joined Voyager's crew. They were all stripped of their of their ranks. Good fact. In one version of the future, Harry Kim was captain of the USS Rhode Island. A design of Starfleet vessel has evolved from the Nova class. This is the diff biggest difference is that the filled in that the nose is actually filled in. If you were to play Star Trek Online, you would actually find out that the Rhode Island is a Nova class, but the biggest difference, the no section, which is actually right here, is covered up. Why? No idea. Here's our master display system of Voyage of uh, not Voyager Equinox. Which is very neat. And here's the plan views of the decks. You have your 
sensor plates right here, very common that the Voyager has the same. You have a secondary deflector, this navigational deflector here, transport emitter right here. This ship does have escape pods and there are phaser strips along the ship. When we look, look at the front, they actually had two deflectors, primary and secondary. Majority of the experiments in the nucleogenic life forms were carried out on the Equinox sick bay on deck four, formed by the ship's EMH. Only cooperate after a ransom deleted the ethnical subroutines. Now, shield for shield modifications, good fast fact. Equinox crew were able to defend themselves for alien attacks by establishing a network of multi-phasic force fields around the ship to prevent the aliens moving in and out of normal space. Designing this ship? Wow. <laughs> Star the ship started out life as another very different tough little ship. The original design actually did appear in the Star Trek Deep Space Nine technical manual, illustrated by Doug Dextrel, Dexler, based on Stern Box concept. The technical manual is actually one of the few books that accepted to contain canon information about the Star Trek universe. Well, Stern Box modified the design turns into a science vessel rather than a torpedo boat. I'm not sure if I was hearing anything. I'm sorry if I paused longer. The design of the Defiant Pathfinder, first engineer from the Finnish Defiant, and Sternbach delivery, deliberately chain elements such as protective walls around the bridge. Defiant and the Nova class actually had that, had that in common. The original drawing from the Defiant Pathfinder and Sternbach provided for Doug Dexler by the finished artwork for the DS9 manual. Tim Arles provide drawing this on the front and side elevations, which had not been worked out in the DS9 manual. Calculated size ship, which gave it about eight decks. And here's the final CG version. With its bow damage suffered in its journey in the Delta Quadrant. Here's Voyager's journey. You're well, the whole thing about Star Trek Voyager is about Voyager's journey home. Imagining you're on a ship 70,000 light years from Federation space. Voyager uses anything to their to her advantage to get home, such as subspace courting. corridors that allow to cover vast distances at great speed. Most of the times, the ship would actually be be shore by unusual means, like this one right here, it has propelled the ship through the heart of the Borg space when. She actually gained almost Q-like powers. She was able to... The crew used Tosh's capital to recreate a graviton surge that sent the ship in space reemerge 30 sectors near her home. And the final leap, you know, to visit from Janeway's future self as her as an admiral Travel back in time to set course for history. Persuade the crew to access transport network that Borg used to travel between all four quadrants. Helps protect by at least 47 Borg cubes. Janeway worked along with self future self to destroy the network by affecting the Borg Queen pathogen that caused the Queen to lose control with shielding around manifolds. 
Voyager was able to destroy manifolds by firing transphasic torpedoes to travel through the transwarp conduits. It actually sets off a chain reaction that results in a collapse of the entire network. This shockwave actually enabled Voyager to exit the conduit less than a light year from Earth, bringing a man into its journey, which is about 63 years ahead of schedule. Made it back home about 2378, covered about 30,000 light years by using a Borg network of transwarp conduits. Now on screen, the only key appearances is Equinox, both parts 1 and 2. The end of Equinox part 2, five members, just like I said. Join Voyager's crew. Janeway actually stripped them all from their rank and privileges and told them they would work under close supervision. One of them ever appeared again. Brian Sulfan made a brief appearance in Repentance, where he was seen working for Neelix as a guard. And the Next Generation Technical Manual has an appendix to show the early concept for designing of what would have replaced Enterprise D. Drawings produced by Rick Steinbach and Legolas Nova class, but nothing in common with the design of the Equinox, as seen here. Equinox is the only ship of this exact design appeared on screen. A very similar ship named the Rhode Island appeared in the last episode of Voyager, but is, certainly has an upgrade. Nova class. So the next issue we're going to take is the Ferengi Marauder. I'm not very too keen on the Ferengis. I don't like Ferengis. Buttheads. That's what they are to me. <laughs> so here's the back. So, let's kind of take a look. Here is the USS Equinox, the short little Nova class. Actually, it actually has a pitchfork design for the front. So you can actually clearly see the primary and the secondary, also the sensor panels on the ship. And we have not seen this with the warp grills, it actually illuminates when you actually hold them up to the light. Notice you can't see the bridge. Because they actually have this little wall right here. The bridge is just smack dab right in the center. So, you know, also, the, the reason why why the USS Rhode Island has the has that cover right here is to protect the secondary deflector dish. Which I don't blame, you know. It's also a well, I'm not sure about this, but it looks like the, the cells are off just a little bit. They're supposed to be level, but I ain't gonna complain about it. Also, I don't know if you see this, but there's a little hole. Possibly a little possibly a warp not a warp breach, but like a Hull breach. I'm not sure that's supposed to happen. So you have the back right here. I like this ship. It's a little much unique. Um, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. That looks like an aero shuttle or something. Because I have no idea what this is. It looks, it looks like it has like a space shell like design, but. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there or not. The uh, magazine did not cover what it is. So, leave it up. You guys find out what it is. Ship back in place. I like this little ship. It's small, looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there's nothing else I should add. So, my name's Dustin, and I will see you in the next video.